Sino ang isasalang natin ngayon sa hot seat? I think that I my emotions are very different from him. You love him or you hate him, pero... Eko hindi, wala naman nag-hate siya. Good evening, I am your host, Kim Bernardo Lokin. President Duterte last year admitted federalism would not likely happen during his term. However, the president says he is still pushing for amendments to the 1987 Constitution. If you will recall, federalism was one of the main campaign platforms of the president underlining its importance to the current administration. In the light of the president's statement, it is... Is the movement for the federalism over or uh, is there something to hope for? Well, we will ask our guests for today. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have DILG Undersecretary Jonathan Malaya. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Kong, and uh, thank you for having me. Okay, good evening, Yusek. You are the spokesperson as well as the administrator of federalism for the DILG, is that correct? That's Unfortunately, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you say unfortunately? It's a very difficult task. Okay, uh, yeah. so because you are in the hot seat, uh, Yusek, <laughs> Uh, and because uh, you are my friend, I will let you start first uh, with a question. Is federalism dead? No, it's not. Uh -oh. And why do you say so? Well, we still have uh, two and a half years in the president's term. No? And it depends upon the perspective of people. Mm -hmm. It's either you look at something as half full or half empty. Yes. So those who are pessimists will say, ah, nang oras yan, hindi na magagawa yan. But for us, no federalists, you know, uh, hope springs eternal. So I think there is still time. Mm -hmm. uh, to amend uh, the 1987 constitution. And I think there's enough time to build a consensus among government agencies and the private sector for these amendments. But, you know, Yusek, it seems that uh, from the pronouncements uh, of our president, ano, parang he has given up hope on uh, this already. He says, I think he was quoted at one point as saying that uh, he... Parang he virtually is giving up already uh, on uh, the federalism happening within his term. Well, uh, this came out because people were expecting a statement from him during the SONA. Yes. You know, alam nyo naman, yung SONA, oh, yan talaga yung parang direction ng ating bansa. Correct. So a lot of people were expecting it and I was personally also expecting it. I was there also in the SONA and <laughs> I wanted to hear from him. Yes, oh, and oh. Uh, that SONA was the SONA where the DILG got a lot of instructions from the president. No? Yes. From the road clearing to removing the uh, ninja cops in the um, uh, PNP to uh, peace talks with the uh, rebels, no? Lahat yun na ibigay sa DILG, pero yung hinahantay nating federalism, hindi niya na, na maggit. But, after naman the SONA, he was uh, asked, no? Sabi niya, sir, um, in an ambush interview in the Batasan, and he was mm -hmm. asked. So, mm -hmm. sabi niya, well, if the people don't like federalism, um, uh, it's fine with me. Mm -hmm. But, we need to amend the 1987 Constitution. Correct. So, following his directive, um, we heard it loud and clear, uh, the Task Force on Federalism and Constitutional Reform uh, ha have now been talking with Congressman Rufus Rodriguez, the chairman of the Committee on Constitutional Amendments. Yes, and, in the House. Yes. And to his credit, he already is going to issue a committee report mm -hmm. um, laying down some amendments to the Constitution, which, in my opinion, and uh, looking at the provisions is a step towards a federal system. Okay, so that's a, that's a good way of putting it, uh, yes. you say, you know? <laughs> yes, a yes, step yes. towards federalism yes. without actually naming it as, is, uh, it as such. Because now, when people uh, hear about that news and uh, constitutional amendments, so uh, na isip lang nila o oh, yung ano lang o oh, con con mm -hmm. con as yes. di ba yes. and uh, se the self-serving provisions for the Congress uh, in general, Congressman. Kasi ganyan lang nakikita. Let's face it, you know, people don't understand what it is. But in reality, it's a step also towards federalism and to improving and updating our constitution, tama ba? That's right. Because some of the things that we're pushing for Congress to adopt. Mm -hmm. is to increase the internal revenue allotment of local government units. Okay. And IRA is one of those things that our LGUs, particularly the 4th class, the 5th class, and 6th class municipalities, have been asking for That's for so their lifeblood, you said. Yes. Oh, oh. And there's always this argument that Imperial Manila controls the purse and mm -hmm. controls the flow of funds. Yes. So, 
if Congress adopts this proposal of the DILG mm -hmm. to institutionalize in the Constitution the Mandana's decision of the Supreme Court, yes. that will ensure that in the future, um, all of the LGUs will have enough funds to be able to bring development and progress in their specific areas without necessarily asking for funds from Metro Manila. Okay, um, where will you get uh, the ad additional funds needed uh, to fund the ERA or the additional ERA for the uh, local governments? Yeah, it, ito kong this requires a re-engineering of government. So, kaya nga yung iba na nagsasabi na, ah, hindi naman yan, it, this is really a big change. Mm -hmm. Because um, national government has to realize that development cannot happen if it's the national government that decides on everything. Mm -hmm. So the national government will have to give up some of those money mm -hmm. and give this to the uh, local government units. You'd be surprised, Kong, no? The Department of Health up to now still implements barangay health centers, still um, releases funds for barangay health centers. Mm -hmm. Eh, matagal nang naipasa ang local government code. Health mm -hmm. should be the um, purview of local government units, and yet the national government um, still acts, no, as a unitary. Na everything has to go through it. Uh -oh. So, if the, for example, just this one example, if mm -hmm. a DOH can uh, can be told na yung mga ganyang proyekto hindi na yan sa inyo, and the funds are to be transferred to the LGUs mm -hmm. and other agencies follow suit. Napakadami pong pondo na ay maibibigay natin Talaga? sa mga local government units. Okay, that's that's actually very heartening to hear, mm -hmm. no? At least maraming matutuwa dyan, especially yung mga uh, local governments, uh, lalo na yung mga sinasabi mo, fourth class, fifth class municipalities, yes. di ba? Pero let's go back. One of the biggest hurdles of uh, the push for federalism, una sa lahat, din na nga naiintindihan yan ng mga nakakaintindi ng supposed to be that, you know, federalism is like this and like that because there are many forms. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, uh, hindi mm -hmm. ba? Eh, ang sabi nila, Yusek, is that hindi daw talaga alam ng tao kung ano ibig sabihin ng federalism. What is your reaction to this? Well, um, kahit naman yung constitution itself, hindi rin naman naiint. <laughs> Karang ang daming tao na hindi nakakaintindi. But mm -hmm. the DILG has been doing what we can mm -hmm. uh, to explain this to the public. In fact, we already went to 60 provinces uh, just last year. Oh, okay. Uh, doing the, public forums. With the uh, pinangungunahan ni uh, Secretary Anyo, right? Yes, diba? uh, kasi there's a task force yeah. so, created sige by nga, the President. Tell, tell me about it. Sige, this task force created by the President, tell me, um, ano na ba yung mga nagawa nito at sino yung mga kasama dito sa task force? It's a government task force. Mm -hmm. no? It was created because um, yung mga tao kasi nalito, as yes. you mentioned, hanggang ngayon nalilito kung pa yung ano ba talaga eh. yung federal system na, gusto, oh, oh. na pinupush ng gobyerno. Yes, oh, oh. So the first thing that we wanted was, why, not, why don't government sit down first mm -hmm. and decide kung ano ba talaga yung anyo oh, oh. ng federal system ng gusto natin? Oh, oh. Other groups can advocate what they want, but mm -hmm. government must have one voice. Yes. So, dito sa task force na ito, the economic managers are there, the DILG is there, mm -hmm. the, DIL, the, DO, the uh, OJ is there, mm -hmm. the PCOO, the CHED, all of the government, the major government agencies are there. Mm -hmm. And it was tasked by the president to do two things. Mm -hmm. Number one, come up with a common position mm -hmm. in so far as federalism and constitutional change is concerned. So, naglabas na kayo? Hindi meron pa. na ba? Malapit wala na, pa. malapit wala na. Pa. Ang, Last year pa kayo, Yusek. Kung, uh, kung <laughs> ang meron kami is uh -oh. the surgical amendments. Tapos na kami. Oh, okay. Sige. As requested by Congressman Rufus. Okay, so tell me about that. Uh, at least meron na tayong progress in that regard. Yes. Okay. Um, there are three pillars mm -hmm. in the report of the task force. Mm -hmm. The first pillar uh, concerns um, local government units. Okay. I already mentioned to you the first one, which is the internal revenue allotment. Yes. No. Oh. The second one is to transform the Regional Development Council to a Regional Development Authority. Oh, okay. Okay. If, if our uh, viewers will know, the mm -hmm. RDC, kasi, which has been a feature of the 1987 Constitution, yes. is simply a recommendatory body. Mm -hmm. So, magmimitin niya. Wala siya talagang powers. Wala yes, powers. wala. Um, wala siyang powers. Oh. Pero sayang siya kasi that's where all the governors meet. That's where mm -hmm. all the national government regional offices meet. Yes. So, this has a, a large potential for development. Mm -hmm. So, 
we want to amend the constitution so that the RDC becomes the regional development authority. authority. So meron na siya ngayong kakayahan, may power na siya. Mag-implement mag ang proyekto uh -huh. at meron din siyang pondo. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So we, for example, um, if a certain region, like I'll give the example of Bicol, no? Sige. For so long, the Daraga Airport has not been completed mm -hmm. because of some issues as to funding, walang makuhang pondo sa Maynila, hindi makuha yung approval na kung sino-sino. Mm -hmm. If the RDA is in existence, the Bicolanos can then decide, we want to finish this airport, we don't care, we have our money, we will implement it. Mm -hmm. So, it's like federalism, mm -hmm. <laughs> but not entirely federalism. Oh, okay, so, okay. maganda yun actually, but it is uh, marvelously vague. You yeah. said, but, pero but ganito. But it's a step too hard. Tama, tama, oh. okay. So now, uh, my next question is uh, this. Diba? Kung malapit na kayong mag-agree mm -hmm. as to the type of uh, federalism, mm -hmm. the form of government that you want to push, Anong, uh, anong form ito, anong format ito, at kanong model ito? Is this a hybrid? But, mm -hmm. Yusek, before uh, our Undersecretary Jonathan Malaya will answer that, we'll have to pause for a break. Stay with us. Good evening and welcome back to the hot seat. Our guest for tonight, Under Secretary Jonathan Malaya from the DILG. And so, uh, once again, Yusek, <laughs> yes, uh, the, the hanging question that I asked from you earlier, ano ba talaga ang inyong napag-agrihan na, Kuya? We will know very soon. <laughs> Kasi I will be the first to admit that yes. there is also difficulty in getting government behind a certain model. Why? Oh, because um, this... Uh, the shift to a federal system mm -hmm. is the greatest change that will ever happen in the country if it happens. There's even uh, this uh, school of thought that doesn't even want to change our constitution. Exactly. Even if uh, it's how many years old already. Yes. And it's a dynamic thing. It's supposed to be evolving. Exactly. As, these, yes. these people feel that the 1987 constitution is perfect. <laughs> and sacred like the Bible. And sacred and therefore every word in it is sanctity and uh -oh. therefore should not be changed. Uh -oh. So kami, pareho tayo kong, we do not believe in that. Uh -oh. uh, it's been 30 years since the, since the 87 Constitution was approved. Alam yes. na natin na madami itong pagkukulang. Madami. Wala mm -hmm. pa nga yatang mention ng climate change as it is happening now. Hindi mm -hmm. ba? Pagkatapos yung ating communications, look at all the, the technologies that have come and go. May AI na tayo. Does it even mention there, di ba? Yes. Uh -oh. When the 1987 Constitution was... Um, past, wala pang cellphone. Exactly. Magsisimula pa lang. <laughs> kung, kung may cellphone pa lang, oh. yung ano pa lang eh, yung Motorola na malalaki. Cellular talaga, oh, cellular, oh, not oh, digital. Oh. But now, it's a digital age. Exactly. So, so, those are just some of the things, hindi ba? That's right, oh, yes. So, you said, I mean, I hope they keep an open mind to this. Even the US, di ba? The United States have changed their constitution so many times. They have amended it, updated it, you know, para to suit with the Modern times, di ba? Well, I think uh, kung there is consensus that it needs to be changed. That's why there I'm, is. I, I'm very confident that Congress will pass the surgical amendments. And even pass it, and maybe even pass a federal constitution, just like what it did last Congress. No? Mm -hmm. uh, but the question is, will the Senate uh, support yes, it? Yes, oh, oh, bakit ganon? Sige nga, uh, said, what but, is the problem with the Senate? Why do they refuse to tackle this particular issue. Why? Nako, kung mahirap na tanong yan, baka mas This, maganda tanongin natin yung mga senador. <laughs> oh my, the, pero since kayo yung task na uh, uh, to coordinate with them, hindi gumagalaw, mabuti pa sa Kongreso kahit papano. And I know that uh, si Congressman Rufus is an advocate of federalism. That's right. That's But right. we also have some advocates in the in the upper house, in the Senate. Senator Coco for one, mm -hmm. di ba? I know for a fact. And his late father, Diba? Was uh, f f uh, oh, the father of federalism, diba? Sinasabi nga natin. And our president, 
nung bago siya tumakbo, yun nga yung excuse ni Presidente, di ba? Sabi niya, imiikot siya nun para sa federalism. federalism. Eh, bakit? That's why kung uh, we're giving it another push, itong, itong uh, second term, a uh, mm -hmm. second uh, half of the President's Oo. term, we're giving it another push. Kasi yes. nadagdagan din naman tayo ng supporter sa Senado. Like? Uh, I have talked to Senator Francis Tolentino personally. Yes. He is supporting constitutional change. No? Of I'm course. sure Senator Bato and Senator Bongo will do so. No? Senator Aimee. Se I have not talked to Senator Aimee personally, but Senator Coco, I'm, of, as you mentioned, is mm -hmm. really on board here mm -hmm. and will be at the uh, core group of pushing for this. No? Mm -hmm. And I've also heard from Senator Tito Soto himself na they support amending the economic provisions of the Constitution. Okay. So, yan, kasama yan dun sa napagkasunduan sa core. No? Mm -hmm. That uh, we do the LGUs through mm -hmm. the ERA and the RDC. I think they will have no objection to that either. I, I'm sure they will not have. Oh. So, because after all, I mean, let's face it, diba? Let's call a spade a spade. These are the local government units, the mayors, the governors, na nagpanalo sa kanila noon, nung nakarang yes. eleksyon, diba? And, 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 and oh. I don't think there will be a senator who will oppose regional and local development. Yes, no? I agree. The other things that um, we approved in core, which I think the senators will, 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 will support, mm -hmm. aside from the... Uh, economic provisions, uh, yes. removing the equity limitations, yung 64th requirement, is the uh, political reforms. Mm -hmm. no? And kasama rin ito sa pinopropose namin kay Congressman Rufus. Yes, yes. Um, uh, ang pinasa sa Senate, uh, pinasa sa House, mm -hmm. is uh, extension of their terms uh -huh. from three years to five years. Mm -hmm. Two consecutive terms, meaning 10 years in ten total. Years na. So two terms ka, ang, ang congressman ay two terms. Ganun. And mayor and governor And mayors well. down the line. Pa, down, the line. Oh, so down the line. And we support that in the ILG. So tiglilimang taon, bawat isang termino. Tama yes, ba? yes. Okay, so two terms. In, in this na three terms, that's nine years yun, di ba? Ang total nun, nine years, di ba? It makes sense naman, kasi masyadong maikli ang three years. Yes. Oh, oh. Kami, kami sa DILG Congress, Congresswoman, we support that because yes. nakikita namin nun sa mga mayors na magong halal, mm -hmm. especially yung mga bago, na yung tatlong taon makes the elections the main feature of our of the of a politician's political life. Correct. Isang taon pa lang, nag adjust ka pa sa trabaho, then, second year mo, nakapag-adjust ka na, you're doing things. And then, pagpasok na pangatlong taon, election na naman. It's time to campaign and uh, have your re-election yes, na yes. naman. It's That's never true. about governance. It's always about politics. That's true. So, uh -oh. even if they say that it's self-serving, it, in, 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 in a way, it may be self-serving, but it is also supported by facts. Mm -hmm. It is supported by studies. Mm -hmm. Na it's not good to have so... Um, co ano? A typical common elections every three years. The, we have to uh, Wala, it's, lengthen there's the really, term. There's really not enough time to implement. It's it's uh, the time frame is very short because the minute you start implementing a project or a policy that is very good, di ba? Mm -hmm. Suddenly, magpapalit na naman election na naman. E kung last term na nung mayor, papano, yes, di ba? Yes, Ngayon yes. kung hindi siya na elect, papano. So you'll have to start from scratch again. Kasi normally, I mean, let's admit kung iba ang nanalo, maring iba naman yung gusto niyang plataforma. Mm -hmm. Iba yung policies niya, iba yung direction niya, di ba? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, I, I, I agree to that. Yes. Uh, pero, okay, um, Yusek, I know that uh, you are the spokesperson for the DILG mm -hmm. and marami kayong ginagawang iba. Of course, ah, yeah. yung, yung federalism <laughs> is uh, your forte. That's why I asked you that, di ba? Uh, uh. And because I believe in it also, that's why. So, syempre, inuna ko yan, di ba? Pero... Uh, what are the other functions uh, that the ILG is doing? Alam ko marami kayong update ngayon on the on the what you call this yung clearing, road yes, clearing yes, na yung mga yes. na ili, yung mga illegally park, yung mga yes. walang parking, di ba? Yes, ano yes. na ang update natin diyan, uh, Yusek? Well, uh, dalawa yung major initiatives namin for actually madami kami initiatives this year, pero uh -oh. I'll just mention three. Uh, the first one is the directive of the President to Secretary Año to be the caretaker in the meantime of. of the Philippine National Police. Okay. Because the President up to now cannot seem to choose who, it's, who should be yes, the next uh, PNP chief. That's true. That's interesting. <laughs> so, okay, tell me about how that is going right now. Okay, but before that, ma'am, tapusin ko lang. Oh. So, that's one. The, sec naman the, second one, mo ngayon, <laughs> the second one is the road clearing, uh -oh. which we will launch a new one uh -oh. um, uh, next week. Uh, a 75-day road clearing nationwide, the entire country. Okay. And the third one is the 
uh, ending the local communist armed conflict. Right. Uh, ELCAC, uh, the secretary, um, well, of course, we support the peace talks called by the president. But the, but the secret secretary, Anyo, is uh, not as uh, positive on the, the peace talks. Uh, well, me too. <laughs> <laughs> so, yan, at least sabihin na natin, yan ang totoo. Eh, me di too, ba? but um, it's, a, it's the prerogative of the president mm -hmm. to call for the peace talks. Yes. Nonetheless, we will continue to request and um, appeal to our brothers who are members of the New People's Army to go down. Mm -hmm. And the DILG has a program called the ECLIP or the mm -hmm. Uh, expanded comprehensive local integration program mm -hmm. wherein lahat po ng rebelde yung bumababa, binibigyan namin ng livelihood, binabayaran namin yung baril, mm -hmm. binibigyan namin ng training, mm -hmm. may suporta hindi lang po sa kanila, kasama yung kanilang mga mahal sa buhay. That's right. Which is why, libo-libo na ang nag-surrender under this administration. Ibig mo sabihin, Yusef, we've had all of this, ganito pala karami yung mga dissidents natin at saka yung so-called red. Yes, kasi... The, um, uh, based the figures ng Philippine National Police, there's around 3,000 something rebels, no? Mm -hmm. And tuloy tuloy naman po kung yung ating sustained police and military operations. Kunit ang maganda kasi sa kanila, they have a mass base, and there are uh, fronts they use. Na pag merong nagsurrender, grassroots, grassroots level kasi sila. Pag may nagsurrender na NPA, may kapalit ka agad. So mm -hmm. in order to solve this problem, we will have decimate them both on the urban areas and in the mountains. You know, Yusek, uh, that term that you use to decimate them is very interesting. Mabuti na lang ikaw nagsabi niyan. Imagine uh -huh. mo if you were uh, uh, sitting and uh, your hat is uh, with the PNP. Imagine mo yung impact ng word na decimation. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> or even your boss, the secretary, <laughs> di ba? Oh, but yeah, I like that term. Very interesting. Okay, so... Uh, balik muna tayo dun, Hindi mo, binitin mo ah, naman ako clearing. sa road cleaning sa road, mo yes, eh. Yes ma'am, yes ma'am. Sige. Opa, yeah. So ano na nangyari? Meron ka bang mga, ano ba yung success rate nito? At saka sinabi mo, may mga pasaway din, di ba? At may Madami mga kinasuman talaga. kayo. Well, Bakit? Sige, tell me about it. Kung ganito kasi yan eh, hindi hmm. lang naman yung mga mayors ang pasaway. Yung mga taong bayan din pasaway. Oo, oo. Kasi ang problema kasi sa ating bansa, ang uh, tao, ang ang tingin niya, pagtapat niya, pag may ari niya. Mm -hmm. When in fact, it's a public road, it's mm -hmm. a public street, it's a public embankment or a public um, side, sidewalk. Mm -hmm. So, ang dami nating mga sidewalk vendors, madami mga yung easement kinain na, mm -hmm. no, na gusto ni Presidente ibalik sa taong bayan. Yes. So, ang dami nating outpost na tinanggal, police station na nag-encroach na, na tinibag natin, mm -hmm. mga terminal na nasa gilid ng kalsada. Ngunit, nakita natin na hindi pa rin buo, hindi pa rin lahat nagawa. Mm -hmm. no? At yung iba nga nagbalikan pa nung Pasko. Oo nga, so ibig yes. sabihin hanggang umpisa lang sila. No? Hanggang umpisa lang. So you will tell us ngayon kung sino-sino uh, itong mga, especially mga areas na mga pasaway na to At uh, ano ba yung uh, mga hakbang or the steps that the agency had taken uh, against uh, all these violators? But, Yusek, before you answer that again, we'll have to pause for another break. Stay with us, please. Mga isyong pinag-uusapan, mga palitang laman ng pahayagan, impormasyong dapat yung malaman, Tatalakayin, pupusisiin, at hihimayin ni Mario Garcia kasama ang kanyang mga panauhin sa harap ng bayan. Face Off! Good evening and welcome back to the hot seat. Our guest for this evening is DILG Undersecretary Jonathan Malaya. So, Yusek, you were mentioning earlier about the road clearing and the word pasaway. So... Sino ngayon ang mga sinampulan ninyo? At bakit ninyo sila sinampulan? Yes. Uh, I don't have the list right now, no? But <laughs> sampu itong mayors na ito. Nasa balita naman. Oo, oh, oo. Oh, oh. Actually, hindi ko na pinansin masyado yung pangalan ng mayor, pero yung mga LGUs. But Babait ka lang, Yusek. Ayaw mo across, sabihin. It's across the country, Kong. Uh, it's oh, across oh. the country. Okay. There's one in Bicol. There's another one. In all regions of the country, yes. meron po kaming Finailan. Mm -hmm. And nauna lang sila kasi... Ang ginawa ni Secretary was batch by batch yung filing. Mm -hmm. Kasi ayaw niyang malunod yung mga lawyers namin. Kasi the first thing we did was to issue a show cause yes. to them. Uh, we wanted them to explain why they should not be suspended. Mm -hmm. So after their explanation, what we do is, this is the validation report coming from the, the ILG. Yes. And then we ask them to explain, okay. to tell us 
why we should not suspend them. Uh -oh. and suspension talaga ang inyong ano, ha? Yes, suspension uh -oh. po talaga uh, because yes. it's the directive of the president. No? Yes, yes, and, absolutely. And um, um, failure to reclaim roads is a form of neglect of duty yes. and a grave misconduct. Agree. No? So, um, kausap po namin ng Office of the Ombudsman, um, they, will, they told us they will expedite. The, mm -hmm. these cases. So, so there are already how many cases uh, that uh, as of last week was, then? Oh, oh, that, that was forwarded to the Office of the Ombudsman. Yes. As in, it's a oh. formal affidavit complaint filed by the DILG together with evidences and um, supporting documents. So, okay. so the Ombudsman will not need to do a preliminary investigation anymore. Okay, that we was already a, did the preliminary investigation. Ayaw, that was what I was going to ask, eh, diba? Oh, Kasi oh. it will still take time if the Ombudsman will do that, diba? Yes, yes. Oh. So, Gawa na po yun. We already did that. But, mm -hmm. but of course, the Ombudsman can do its own if, it, course, if, if it wants validate to. Validate and fact check. Um, no? And fact check the mm -hmm. results of the DILG's validation. But I think the Ombudsman knows na yung validation na ginawa namin, hindi lang naman DILG, kasama namin yung PNP, kasama namin yung Brewer on Fire, may media pa kaming kasama. So, at, uh, so alam nila na it was, no, uh, we, we gave all the due process that uh, we can give. Uh, to our local chief executives. And um, this is our first batch. We will file another 10 or another 20 in the coming weeks. The coming weeks, ha? Yes. So, ibig sabihin, talagang ganun pa rin, ano? Sabi mo kanina, Yusek, uh, earlier that, of course, hindi lang naman yung mga mayors, ultimately, command responsibility talagang the buck stops with them, di ba? Mm -hmm. But, yung mga tao mismo, eh. Kasi, how do you solve a problem like this, uh, Undersecretary, where people will build houses but not garages for their cars? Yes. Kasi merong isa sabi, for example, merong school of thought na sinabi na, hindi naman malaki yung bahay nila noon. Eh, mm -hmm. nag-improve ang buhay nila. Nakabili sila ng sasakyan. Tapos, na-improve nila yung bahay nila. Pero walang provision for garage. How do you intend to uh, fix this problem? Ano ba ang yes. solution? Kaya nga kung ang inuna muna namin sa road clearing are the major roads. Yes. Kung baga, pag major road ka, malas mo. <laughs> Ganun talaga. If Tama. it's a mabuhay lane, which is identified by the MMDA as an alternate route. So wal, you're talking about talaga. Metro Manila, no? About Metro Manila. Mm. So ganun po talaga, wala, no? Um, doon sa mga inner roads, we allow the local government unit to decide on their local policies. Okay. So for example, you will find in Marikina, one-side parking sila. Mm -hmm. At sinusunod yun sa Marikina, one-side parking. Ang tanong ng DILG, kung naayos ng Marikina, ang Marikina, Bakit Ngunit pag lumipat ka sa QC, <laughs> lumipat ka sa ibang lugar, hindi na maayos. Bakit ganun? Mm -mm. And the mga labas po sa pag-aaral namin is that the culture of discipline in Marikina was developed through time. Yes. Panahon ni Mayor BF, mm -hmm. sunod-sunod na iba-ibang mayor, talagang sinunod nila yung um, mga ordinansa nila. They mm -hmm. impose a culture of discipline. They have an ordinance on anything and they implement it. Mm -hmm. So, wala, sabi sa akin ni Mayor Marcy, alam mo dito, Yusek, wala dito uh, sidewalk vendor sa Marikina. Mm -hmm. Meron isa, dalawa, mga taga Quezon City. <laughs> sa, <laughs> sa so, mga dayo. <laughs> mga dayo daw. Oh. So, makita mo yung kanilang ilog, malinis, makita mo mm -hmm. kanilang, kanilang basura, hindi mm -hmm. ng kalat. It's because of a culture of discipline. And, mm -hmm. Yun ang sinisimulan naman ni Mayor Isko dito, mm -hmm. sa May, dito naman sa Maynila. Right. Kaya makikita mo dito sa, Met, dito sa Maynila, yes. ang daming mga disiplina muna tarpaulins. Yes. Proyekto po yan ng DILG I see. na sinusuportahan ni Mayor Isko Moreno. Okay, that, that's, a, that's a very good one. Uh, meron pa actually, Yusek, napakalaking ahensya kasi ng DILG. You know? Since uh, ngayon, pati police, kayo ang caretaker. So, mm -hmm. you look after that, di ba? How about solid waste management plans? So, could you give us an update on this? Kasi no. alam mo, yan, talagang no. isa, ang reality is yan talaga ang ano, eh, problema na... Alam mo kung hot, <laughs> <mo>? hot seat <laughs> talaga itong show na ito. Oo La, nga. Walang mga madadaling tanong. Ang hindi hihirap ba? ng mga tanong. Hindi, hindi. Sabi ko nga, very capable naman ang, ano, eh, ang ating undersecretary. So, secreta ay, undersecretary, baka magalit ang inyong boss. Ano? Uh, so, undersecretary, paano yan yung solid waste management? Kasi... Me, it, yes. Ganon din ang problema. It's a culture of discipline, correct? That's right. Tama mm -hmm. po kayo, Kong. And um, this is where we work with the DNR. Mm -hmm. Kasi it's really the mandate of the DNR. Pero pasok po ang DILG because the Supreme Court issued that mandamus on Manila yes. Bay Rehab. Yes. At uh, kasama namin ang DNR dun sa Manila Bay Rehabilitation mm -hmm. na nasimulan natin last year. Correct. And a component of that rehabilitation is for the barangays to lead in the solid waste 
segregation and the um, yung, the setting up of um, uh, MRF, no? Mm -hmm. Uh, per, yes, per yung recovery facilities. Uh, materials no? recovery uh -oh, facilities. Uh -oh. So, uh, naglabas kami ng memorandum circular na kailangan every week nagki-clean up ang mga barangay. Meron bang mga um, MRF, uh, may mga facilities, ba recovery facilities ang mga barangay uh, nationwide? Ang alam ko, yung mga more progressive barangays lang ang meron eh. Uh, yes. There are a lot of areas na wala. They don't yes. even understand what an MRF is. Yes, and one of the problems of the city of Manila, for example, mm -hmm. is dito po kasi sa metro city of Manila, there are 900 barangays here. Sure. Humakbang ka lang ng isa, barangay isa, barangay Tama. na naman. Oh. So, during our inspections, nakita namin na wala ngang site for barangay hall. Yes. And the barangay halls are encroaching on the sidewalk. That's right. So, we... Itong ating ginagawang road clearing, itong minention yung Manila Bay Rehab and all of these, we are mm -hmm. trying to strengthen or um, remedy years of neglect. Mm -hmm. no? Years of neglect ang kapabayaan. So, saan kayo nagsisimula? <laughs> no, we are still doing it. No? <laughs> <laughs> like, how? <laughs> Together with the DNR, um, oh. madami na tayo na ipasarang mga establishments dito sa what is called as the Manila, uh, Manila Bay area. Yes. Uh, in particular, the, the different LGUs that pump uh, their oh. waste uh, in the uh, different rivers that are tributaries to the Manila Bay. That's so, right. kami, doon kami nagtatrabaho. But we need to work start. closely with the DNR para mabawasan talaga natin yung uh, waste that is uh, being dumped into the rivers mm -hmm. because lumalabas, karamihan domestic waste talaga. So, if you were looking, Congresswoman, for a holistic solution, one of the biggest solutions will be to transfer all of the internal, all of the ISFs or the um, informal settler families, which are around 10,000, from the um, danger zones in the Manila Bay area and in the um, tributaries of the Manila Bay. Pag malipat po natin sila sa ibang lugar, malaking, 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 bagay, malaking no? tulong. Because uh -huh. they use the Manila Bay as a septic tank. That's, That's the problem. That's true. Oo, lahat, lahat nandudoon eh. Yes. Diba? Wala nga eh. So, like I said, it's a culture of discipline. But let's see, because uh, we have a new Manila mayor and uh, we'll see because uh, so far, baka mas, mala, baka mas uh, tumugon ngayon ang mga taong ito sa plea ng ating bagong mayor ng Manila, no? So hopefully, we'll see. At least in Manila, I'm talking about the city of Manila. Kasi Manila Bay, kasi yata Manila, Pasay, kasama, ano? Kasama. Uh, oo, pahaba yun, eh, di ba? Uh, Kal Kaloocan, Malabon. Oh, oh, yes, Paranaque, Las Piñas, okay. no, all of those. Okay. okay. So, Yusek, since kayo ang caretaker ng PNP, paano naman ang ating anti-illegal drug campaign? Well, ma we, um, Secretary's Directive for the Anti-Illegal Drug is sustained mm -hmm. police operations this coming year. So okay. we will not let up. We are committed to this. This is already the greatest accomplishment of the administration. And we will have to sustain this until the end of the term. Okay. It's interesting why you said this is one of the greatest accomplishments of this administration. Because the Vice President was, <laughs> has mentioned recently na 1% lang daw. So what are those figures that she is talking about? And uh, how do we now, um, you know, reconcile, um, you know, same figures, different analysis, di ba? So, before you answer that, <laughs> Under Secretary, we will pause for another okay. break. Please stay with us. Hi everyone, I am Zihar Basho and welcome to the new Clark City where the 30th Southeast Asian Games will be held this November. Dito gaganepin ang tagisa ng mga atleta mula sa iba't ibang bansa ng Southeast Asian region. Good evening and welcome back to our last segment on the hot seat. So for tonight, our guest is still the ILG Undersecretary Jonathan Malaya. So, uh, Mr. Undersecretary, dahil kayong caretaker ng uh, PNP and uh, we are talking about the war on illegal drugs. Like I, I mentioned earlier, sabi ni Vice President Lenny Robredo, 1% lang daw ang nasolve. Eh, ang sabi mo, greatest accomplishment nitong uh, administration na to. How do you reconcile such conflicting statements? Tell me. Uh, well, Kong, uh, disappointed talaga kami dun sa sinabi ni Vice President. Uh, uh -oh. Because we warmly welcomed 
her when she was ICAD chairperson. Mm -hmm. She was ICAD chairperson for a bit, uh, for around two weeks, no? Yes. And she came to the DILG. Mm -hmm. And actually, pinasyal pa namin siya dun sa Jesse Robredo Hall, no? Mm -hmm. Naglagi kami ng chinelas, ano dun? Uh, chinelas exhibit. Mm -hmm. to, because the, uh, the former... Um, the late uh, Jesse, Jesse Robredo, Robredo was a former secretary of the DILG. That's so, correct. Uh, sa feeling namin, when she came to visit us, it was like a homecoming of sorts. No? Yes. And we, we gave her all the support and we welcomed her. No? Some of the other agencies were not as supportive as compared to DILG, but you know, we... we you we, did. You we, opened we, the doors for her. We opened the door her, to yeah. her. Oh, she came and we briefed her, especially on the community-based uh, drug rehab program. Mm -hmm. So when she said na, um, we should give more funds para doon sa uh, reduction side no doon sa um, supply kasi ang demand ang drugs eh so yes. we have sabi niya we have been focused too much on the supply side let's focus naman on the demand let's do more drug rehab we completely agreed with her yes and we said that we would like to work closely with the department of health and the DSWD so that we can have more uh, drug rehabilitation centers and we can um, work more with communities to reduce the demand mm -hmm. Pero nung nagsalita siya about dun sa 1%, medyo na doon kami na-disappoint. Bakit na-disappoint lang kayo? Huh? <laughs> Disappointed <laughs> lang. Uh, oh. I'm just being... Uh, well, <laughs> well, si Secretary, I think, uh, 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 had a uh, uh, different way of saying this. no Because we, we also give her the respect she deserves as uh, mm -hmm. our Vice President. Mm -hmm. no Kaya medyo... Madami na saktan sa, sa Philippine National Police oh, because oh. ang daming na namatay na police in anti-drug operations. So, what is really the truth? Ano, um... Totoo naman na maraming nagawa, hindi ba? At the, the numbers don't lie. Why is there a different interpretation that was given, you know, using the same figures that you guys actually gave to her? Yes. I, I think kung um, yung kanyang sources uh, are not, you know, uh, are not... <laughs> uh, ano ba ba they have problem with the sources, no? Because uh -oh. what um, she had her, she has her own interpretation mm -hmm. of uh, the data. Mm -hmm. Na hindi naman sa tingin namin tama. Because mm -hmm. if she will say it's a it's a failure, then that goes against the uh, opinion of the majority of our countrymen, no? Mm -hmm. uh, who at eighty five percent support this president wholeheartedly mm -hmm. and support the anti drug war. Because uh, sabihin nanya ko anong gusto niyang sabihin. Yung tao sa baba, if you ask them about the accomplishment of the administration in so far as the mm -hmm. anti-drug war is concerned, they will tell you na dramdam nila yung pagbabago. Oh, oh, I think that's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, do the ordinary citizens feel the uh, anti-drug war campaign that mm -hmm. this government is doing, number mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. Number two, do they feel safer now in the streets than before uh, this campaign was uh, started, hindi ba? Yun yun eh. And then number three, of course, yung walang kamatayang EJK uh, issue yes. na yan, hindi ba? Ang laging sinasabi, nasan daw yung mga big fish, nasan daw yung mga big fish. Mm -hmm. And kung, uh, if you will remember, pagpasok na pagpasok ni Presidente, nagka-narcolist ka agad. Yes. Na neutralized na yung mga yon. Even the mayors, no? Mm -hmm. Some of them did not run anymore, na, na tumahimik na lang, no? And the DILG filed cases against the uh, congressmen and mayors, no, who were involved in the drug in the in the drug uh, drug problem, no? Yes. So, um and and daming ang uh, uh, naging casualties, no? Both on the drug uh, syndicates and dito naman sa kapulisan. Mm -hmm. So, paano niya sasabihin na walang naging uh, accomplishment? Yes. Doon lang yung uh, nakapagtataka. Ngayon, sa panahon kasi ngayon, since tatlong taon na since si Pangulong Duterte nakaupo, hindi na talaga sikat yung mga drug lords kasi <laughs> ano na eh, um, talagang naglaylo sila. Mm -hmm. So, whenever there is a big dr uh, 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 by bus operation or a big drug operation, the names that are coming out are already Chinese nationals. Mm -hmm. And these Chinese nationals, hindi naman sila sikat. So, ha, wala na tayong mahahanap pang um, drug, big drug lords sa Pilipinas kasi wala nang shabu operation sa bansa ngayon. The Philippine National oh, Police... You, uh, yeah. Oh, oh definitely. Yeah. Is, is that a definitive statement? That's a definite statement. All of the drugs that are uh, being peddled now come from outside sources. So, smuggled into... Smuggled into the Philippines. Wala na pong uh, operations dito sa ating bansa. I see. Okay, so, paano yung sinasabi nila na kung tanggalin mo yung uh, current na head ng sindikato, ng yung drug lords o ng uh, yung operations nila, tanggalin mo, 
they will just replace it with uh, someone else. Um, and then, you know, another group of people. But the same thing happens. Do you agree with that? Uh, That's why sustained police operations are needed. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, kaya nga sindikato yung mga yan. Mm -hmm. Hindi naman yan isang tao, dalawang tao. No? Sampo, 20, 30 yan. Mm -hmm. no? It's and a network, a whole it, network. Yeah. And we can only arrest a few of them every, every time. Mm -hmm. No, We have to follow Miranda rights. We have to follow all of these things. Kaya mm -hmm. kung minsan... Um, it's very difficult to prosecute. But nonetheless, um, the Filipino people know that this has been a major accomplishment of the administration. And no amount of um, uh, statements coming from other sources can, uh, can um, change this fact. Oh, oh, nah, oh, oh. After all, we're looking at the same figures that came out, diba? It's just the analysis or the interpretation, the interpretation. that uh, is vastly different, diba? Yung nakakagulat din doon. Okay, so Undersecretary, why don't you also tell us a little bit about the other projects that the DILG has, no? And uh, like yung napag-usapan natin kanina before we went on air, diba? Na meron kayong mga ibang projects that help the community, that help the local government you units, di ba? Katulad yung mga patubig. Tell us about that and yes. what you are, um, you know, what's the update on those? Well, the DILG um, has a big responsibility in the local government sector. Mm -hmm. But uh, we do not control the local governments. Local governments are autonomous entities. Sure. But um, under the law, uh, we exercise supervision over them uh, mm -hmm. as alter egos of the president. So, ang ginagawa po namin mostly is uh, capacity building. We uh, capacitate them so that then they are in an able, better position to serve their constituents. Yun ang trabaho ng DALG. Mm -hmm. Partners po kami ng local governments. Right. So, some of the things we're doing, as you mentioned, is the um, Salin Tubig, which is mm -hmm. our water system. Okay. How, wh how, what is that and how does it work? Oh, so uh, to, the, to the areas or local government units or towns na wala pa pong patubig, mm -hmm. kami yung DILG will give them the funds so that they can implement uh, a water system in their respective areas. So talagang basic service yung uh, mm -hmm. dinadala namin. Meron din kaming kalsada program, okay. uh, which is road concreting. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so hindi ito yung parang uh, farm to market roads or kasama na ito doon? Kasama. Iba-iba. Mm -hmm. Merong farm to market road component. Mm -hmm. Merong, um, Depending on the need of the municipality. Yes, yes. Sige, tell me about how that works. Um, so, a, a munis uh, meron, kasi, ang DILG kasi is present in every LGU. That's, yes. I think that's what's different about the DILG compared to other government agencies. Yes. The DILG is there through the local government operations officer. Meron po kaming tao sa bawat LGU. At merong sigurado chief of police dyan at may fire station dyan. So yung tatlong yun, they form the DILG family in every local government unit. Okay. So si Mayor will talk to our local government operations officer. Sasabihin lang niya, ito yung mga pangangailangan ko. And then ipo-forward dyan sa amin, sa national. Mm -hmm. And then we propose that to the DBM. Mm -hmm. And if a DBM approves it, it becomes part of the budget of the DILG. And then you, kayo mismo ang implementing agency, no? The direction yung sa kanila. I mean, the agency that would give them, and the implementation is uh, through the LGU directly. Yes. That's what I'm trying to yes. say. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes. Yan po ang maganda sa DILG sa tingin ko kumpara sa ibang ahensya. Mm -hmm. Kasi hindi kami yung parang bidding is done in Manila. Kasi madaming ahensyang ganun. So, nahihirapan sila yung, yung implementation kasi biniding sa Maynila, in-implement sa Sambuanga del Norte. Mm -hmm. So, hindi ma-implement ng tama kasi yung contractor, wala naman palang tao doon sa Sambuanga, nag-bid lang dito. Mm -hmm. What the DILG does is, we submit the names ready to DBM. The DBM then loans the funds directly to the LGU. I see. At ang trabaho ng DILG na lang is to monitor kung nagko-comply ka ba doon sa specifications mm -hmm. ng proyekto. Kasi kung hindi ka mag-comply, next year, wala ka ng pondong manggagaling sa amin. I see. And yeah. then, meron bang, um, like, what are the actual normal figures uh, for this one? How much can the uh, LGU ex uh, expect in terms of um, aid like that? Halimbawa, when you say farm to market road, or uh, halimbawa, when you, when you talk about the patubig, ano, um, how much budget is usually um, given to a... On the, average, on the average, on the average, mga ma, ano ma'am, uh, some 10 million, 15 million. Depending hindi, on the it, need. Yeah, no? it's not... Uh, walang cap, walang minimum, walang, walang Depende cap. sa need. Mm -hmm. oh, depende sa need ng lugar. Um, kasi, since we have people on the ground, and mm -hmm. since we work to, with the LGU, gagawa ng plano. Mm -hmm. Gagawa ng plano ng local government unit, sasubmit sa amin, we verify it. So, hindi siya parang lahat ng LGU sa buong bansa, table plating ba? 
Oh. Na, lilima kayo lahat. Hindi. Oh, oh. Hindi ganon. Hindi, hindi ganon. Ganun. Oh. Based on okay. the project itself. And right. it's submitted to us. And then you uh, assess whether it's uh, the necessity is uh, really there or not. Yes. Ba? And oh. kung talagang magaling sila, they get an award from us, which is called the Seal of Good Local Governance. Oh, that's good. SGLG, oh. no? Uh -oh. At itong LG, SGLG, this is the highest award that the DILG can give to an LGU. <laughs> At hindi lang po ito honor, it comes with a budget. The, the, may additional budget meron. sila. O, oh, ibig sabihin, magandang incentive pala yan. May, may makukuha sila ng pondo, oh. which they can okay. use for any of so, their projects. So, kailangan yung mga mayors natin, you have to take note of what uh, the Undersecretary had mentioned. Yes. Diba? Okay, final words, uh, Undersecretary. Dahil babalik kita ulit sa illegal drug ano, ha, campaign. Ha? Kasi ito yung unang, ikayo yung primary na agency na tinitignan dito, eh, di ba? So, ano naman po, what can we look forward to? Uh, to so that, you know, to ensure that uh, this uh, illegal drug campaign will remain successful or, or will continue to be successful and defy all the odds. Uh, well, well, we work with the PIDEA here. Mm. It's not just the DILG or yes. the PNP. We work with the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency. And it, we have very capable people uh, on the, at the helm, si Director General Aquino, for example. Yes. yes. Uh, we you also have a Secretary Catalino Cuy as Chairman of the Dangerous Drugs Board. No? Mm -hmm. So we have very good, competent people uh, already here. Pero thinking ko, the success of the program really rests on the President. Kasi kahit nga nung itong uh, huling uh, uh, press con sa Malacañan, si Presidente talaga hindi nawawala yan sa speech niya. Mm -hmm. He will always emphasize it, no? Oo, di ba? Do you remember his uh, one of his commercials nung campaign niya? My God, I hate drugs. <laughs> okay, so uh, so maganda yung ngiti mong ganyan. Ibig sabihin, we can expect a lot more uh, positive developments from the DILG. So, maraming yes. maraming salamat, ha, Undersecretary. Maraming so, salamat po, Congresswoman. Thank you for having me. Oh, oh nga. Uh, and uh, we'll, uh, we'd like to invite you again in the future, the near future, and even your boss, si, uh, si General, si Secretary Anyo, di ba, to be on our hot seat. Yes, ma'am. I'll, I'll mention it to him that you are personally inviting him here. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, once again, maraming salamat po to uh, Undersecretary Jonathan Malaya. And dito po nagtatapos ang latest episode ng Hot Seat. Ako po ang ang inyong lingkod, Kim Bernardo Lokin, magbabalik ang hot seat next week.